Kendall Dewan Marshall, born August 19, 1991. There's many things to love about basketball, some you may not have even knew you liked, that can also be the very thing you can't stand as well. One thing I especially appreciate is the ever-changing of the game and how it manages to keep itself fresh, youthful, and constantly looking for the next thing. As a fan of the game, that's amazing. You never get bored as you guess and await the next change and what that could possibly look like. But for a lot of players, that ever-changing of the game can hurt them sometimes fatally if not for some reasons their tools don't translate to the change. Kendall Marshall, who some argue was the best point guard in North Carolina history, who could see the floor well with his height for the position, and was a great vocal leader, and could literally pass with the best of them, could be the poster child for this. He was the 13th pick in the 2012 NBA Draft, ahead of All-Stars Draymond Green and Chris Middleton. He was taken by the Phoenix Suns in desperate need of a point guard. They expected him to come in and provide the same things he did for UNC, which was get his teammates open, get them the ball, and run the offense under Alvin Gentry, and possibly change the direction of the bottom-feeding franchise. At least, that's what they thought they wanted and thought they had their guy. In hindsight, he wasn't theirs or anyone's guy, seeing as just after four years in the NBA, playing with a different team each season, he was out of the association, falling victim to circumstance and was never able to recover. Here are three reasons Kendall Marshall's growth was stunted and why UNC's greatest pure point guard couldn't get it done in the league. Salute to Joshua Huntley for this request. It's your boy JC Stunted Growth. Ash, get him. Kendall Marshall is a 6'4 point guard from Dumfries, Virginia that was a Division I high school champion by his senior year in high school. Although he was rated outside of the top 10 nationally, he was highly rated as a point guard and a McDonald's All-American that averaged 15 points, 9 rebounds, and 6 assists. Schools like North Carolina, Virginia Tech, and Villanova saw past those pedestrian numbers and made him a top priority at the position because of his obvious ability to run an offense and poise under pressure. He chose North Carolina as his school of choice and his journey to become the school's best pure point guard began. Quick reminder, if you want exclusive content like workout videos, ad-free features before they release here, and more, head over to the Patreon page now and become a supporter of pushing these stories and efforts to help any young hooper not have their growth stunted. It's something I wish I had but didn't, so it's my offering to you. Appreciate you guys. Please drop a like and comment on this video and let me know who I should do next. Enjoy the video. Stunt number one, lacking the tools. I think the biggest reason Kendall Marshall had a hard time sticking around in the NBA is because he lacked a few of the most important tools as a modern point guard which are the ability to score and defend at a high level. And not just score, but to get into the lane, put pressure on the defense, and keep teammates happy at the same time. Going back to high school, Marshall was never the best at that, and when he joined Carolina, he wasn't asked to put the ball in the hole so much with five future NBA players on his team. Instead, he was asked to run the offense, keep the team steady, and use his unique setup ability that was obvious since day one for the Tar Heels. He would get his chance in his first start as a freshman at Clemson, where the team, coming off a disappointing start to the season, was looking to shake things up. They won that game, and Roy Williams knew it was time to take the keys from Larry Drew and let Marshall develop. He never looked back as he helped the team reach the regional final and averaged over six assists a game, which in college is tremendous for a true freshman. But what was still painfully obvious was that he was never going to be an elite scorer that didn't know he would need that in the future. 
it's not clear to me what schools like North Carolina does to develop their players and whether or not they advise them on the NBA game changes and what things they should be doing to help that adjustment smoothen itself. But from my experience as a Division I player, those programs are so focused on winning at that level that their main concern is preparing you for NCAA success, leaving you with sort of a shot in the dark really, in hopes what you develop into or what changes you've made hit the target as a pro. As a sophomore, his numbers showed more of the same, as he still wasn't a very efficient shooter of the basketball from anywhere, including at the free throw line, where he was shockingly bad. His scoring was basically the same, and it was clear in that area he probably was going to suffer. His assist numbers did jump greatly though, to a legendary 9.8 a game, which made him the best single season passer in the school's history, passing my favorite UNC point guard, Ed Coda. It was also clear from day one when I saw Marshall play that he would suffer defensively at the next level with his slow-footed game, lack of lateral quickness, athleticism, and demeanor on that end of the floor. Fortunately for him, as an amateur, college basketball does a great job masking those things with zone defenses and lack of consistent pro talent you face at that level. Those things would later be exposed after he got to the league as the 13th overall pick. Facing elite point guards on defense nightly, with no speed to get by on offense, no consistent shooting stroke or scoring mentality, he barely lasted a season with the Suns. Halfway through, the team decided to not play Marshall like a 13th overall pick, which told you he was clearly the wrong man for the job for that team in the NBA, mainly because he lacked the necessary tools like scoring and defending adequately for the transition the game's point guards made by that era. Stunt number two, wrong era. Which brings us to this point. Kendall Marshall was in the wrong era completely for a point guard of his skill set. The 2008 NBA draft to me solidified the era of the scoring point guard that could also assist when needed was officially real. Yes, throughout different eras you had point guards that were some of the best scorers in the game, but at those times they were few as the league was still dominated by the bigs and wing players throughout the 90s and early 2000s. In the 2010s, it was officially a point guards league, and all of them had the exact opposite skills as Kendall Marshall. I could see Kendall with the Utah Jazz from 96 to 98. I could see him with the Detroit Pistons in 2004, or even the Indiana Pacers around the same time. I could even see him with a dynasty like the Lakers during their historic run in the early 2000s. But with the fast pace the game moves at today, he didn't stand a chance with his lack of scoring ability, foot speed, athleticism, and defense, which all made him a liability on both ends of the floor. After just one season with the Suns, they gave up on their rookie and traded him to the Washington Wizards even though he was showing promise toward the end of the season in just his first start for the season, having 13 assists and 37 in his first three starts. The Wizards saw the writing on the wall as well, and just three days after trading for him, they waived him, to which he was picked up by the Delaware 87ers of the D-League. It's reported he even bought tickets to the game for his family, thinking Washington would be the perfect fit for him personally, being closer to his home of Virginia. Had Kendall Marshall been in a different era, teams may have valued his innate ability to pass the ball and allow him to slow the game down and get the best shot. Stunt number three, being in bad situations. Usually the lottery of the NBA draft is held for picks you believe wholeheartedly after research you'll at least allow to develop into what you saw them as and best case exceed those expectations and become even greater. The Phoenix Suns, for whatever reason, took Kendall Marshall with their only first round pick in a position you would think deserved a real shot at running the team in his way. 
being traded from there after just one season tells me whatever they thought was way off and it put Kendall Marshall in a bad situation in his career and confidence wise. The Wizards trading for him only to waive him soon after was also a public shot to his career who only did it to make the money make sense in the Gortat trade. After a short D-League stint, he signed on with the Lakers and was showing some signs of what everyone expected leaving Carolina. But once again, with his lack of ability to score and defend at that level, and point guards like Jeremy Lin, Jordan Clarkson, and even at one point Xavier Henry, his success with the team was short-lived. Also because Mike D'Antoni never liked Kendall Marshall, even though he would have games like against Utah in a rare start where he put up 20 points and 15 assists. He would have six games for the Lakers with 15 plus assists, but at the same time, 18 in which he scored five points or less. He'd go on to be waived by the team, claimed by the Milwaukee Bucks, played 28 games, tore his ACL, and was traded and waived by his former team, the Phoenix Suns. He had a few stints with Philadelphia and back to the G League, but none proved to be good situations for him, and after just four years in the league, at 24, 25 years old, he was out of it, later retiring altogether in 2017. With everything mentioned, it was hard for a guy like Kendall Marshall to have stuck around in a very important change of guard the early 2010s were seeing. He's still regarded as one of, if not the best UNC pure point guards ever, and had he been in better situations, may have carved out a nice lane in the NBA. For these reasons, that didn't happen, and his growth was stunted. It's your boy JC Stunted Growth, and I'm out.